So the first thing, you've got to settle it. You've got to decide, tonight's the night, never again, this is it. End of story. No matter what, this is it. And then whenever hands are laid on you or however you decide to receive, when that happens, you, you just have to decide right then, okay, it is done. It's done. And then you act like it's true. And then you start realizing. Now, many times when you start acting like it's true, you have to do something you couldn't do before. Now, here's one of the main things, and this is why I'm bringing this up, because we see a lot of people, or hear a lot of people, absolutely healed. I mean, dropping canes, dropping crutches, getting out of wheelchairs, you name it. And then, sometimes on the way home, they'll call the next day and say, uh, it came back on me. It came, this came back on me. Now, I'm going to say something. This is probably going to be pretty controversial. But I'd rather get you healed and deal with the fallout later. Amen? But I will tell you this. There's two... Well... If you have a, an aid of some sort, cane, crutch, walker, wheelchair, whatever it is, okay? How do you know you get healed? Well, you can, you can do what you're supposed to do without it, right? That's why when many times when I minister to somebody, if they have a cane, crutch, or walker, whatever, as we start to minister to them at some point, a lot of times I will take it away from them. I just take it away. We did that last Saturday night. There was a guy there at the healing service and I took the thing and did not last Saturday night, was it? Days blend. And so I, but I took it and just tossed it over on the platform and I got him walking back and forth and he was walking free of it. Now, if you can walk free of it, you're healed. If you, in other words, if you needed it to walk and now you can walk without it, you got healed. Amen? I mean, that's pretty simple. And it is something that you can see that you did, that, that you can register and say, yes, I was healed because I was able to do something I could not do. Now, this is biblical because Jesus told the man with a withered arm, stretch forth your hand. Isn't that right? And yet the man could have looked at him and said, duh, if I could do that, I wouldn't need you. I mean, come on. All right. That, that's what my, my hand is withered. But Jesus said, stretch it forth. And when the man did, he was healed. So there was an effort on his part to do the impossible, to do something he could not do. And so, but here's what happens. A lot of times we see this and, and I don't know if it's just a plan of the enemy or what, but some people have so embraced their situation that they want to make their life as comfortable as possible in their situation. And so they, whether it's their insurance or their own money or whatever it is, they will get the fanciest, most expensive wheelchair, electric wheelchair, whatever, whatever it is, they'll get something. And, and I get it, it's to make their life easier. So it makes sense, especially if they're telling you you're going to be in that thing the rest of your life. Okay, but then they'll also get crutches or they'll get a cane or what, and they get these fancy things that cost a lot of money. And then they come to me and they want me to get them well and we minister the power of God to them and then I take the thing and throw it across the platform and then before they leave, now they're, they're walking, they're good, they're you know, praising God and happy and moving around and then before they leave, oh yeah, I need to take that too. Well, what, you don't need it anymore? Well, yeah, but it, that thing cost me over $100. <laughs> you know, and we, I have to look at them and say, and it's fixing to cost you a whole lot more because if, you're, if you get out of a wheelchair, don't ever get back in it. You will be trapped there the rest of your life. That's what happens. If you get rid of a cane, don't pick it up. Don't pick it back up. If you get rid of a crutch or whatever it is you've got, whatever it is, if you get rid of it and you can live without it at that point, know that you were healed, but don't just take it because it cost you money. Amen? It'd be better to be free because if you go back to that thing, it's just using Bible terminology, it's like a dog going back to his vomit. You're turning back to that thing. You're going back to the arm of flesh. And I can give you testimony. Uh, a lady, her eyes were crossed very severely. As long as she wore glasses, it straightened them up where you could see it somewhat. <clears throat> but you couldn't really tell how bad it was. <clears throat> can I get one of those waters? So... Um, her, her eyes were still crossed, even though she had glasses, but you could tell where it was crossed a little bit. 
So, I ministered to her. Thank you, sir. I ministered to her. Took her glasses off. Eyes were perfectly well. Perfectly straight. We set them down. I was ministering to some other people. Started talking. And then before she left where we were at, she picked those glasses back up and put them in her purse. Went home with them, totally healed. <clears throat> put them where she always put them that, that night when she went to bed. Next morning when she woke up, without even thinking, she automatically had it, picked them up, put them back on. Her eyes went straight back across. <clears throat> she came back to me again. It was probably seven times harder to get her healed the second time. We finally did, but it took some work. I mean, we were going after that thing. We had to blast that thing several times to get it back to where it was normal again. And then I told her, I said, don't ever put those back on. Amen? Yeah. Listen, I don't know necessarily why it works that way, but I have seen it. And so I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Amen? So what you, listen, whatever you get free of, be free. Don't go back into bondage. Be free. Amen?